there are a lot of different types of valves that are available to home brewers nowadays. In this video, I want to review the different types of valves, what I think they're good for, as well as cleaning, which is very important. All right, let's jump right into looking at the valves. I didn't put these in any particular order, but I wound up looking at them after I lined them up and I, I did kind of put them in an order. Um, this valve is actually one that you'll find on a lot of the lower end all-in-one systems. And even I think Grandfather even uses it, which would be considered maybe a little bit higher end. But it is a simple ball valve with a threaded end on the on one end, and then it has a spigot on the other, it has a, a thread that comes off and a tube that goes in and has a silicone o-ring in there for sealing on that um, pretty simple operation really um, no you know lockout catches or anything like that like on some of the other valves this particular one from anvil does have a fiber washer on it so that you can rotate it while it's in place and then there's also a silicone seal at the end here up against the the flange that helps it seal to the outside of the kettle so that's probably your most basic type of valve and then moving on, we have the two-piece ball valve, which is a really, really common valve in home brewing. I see it on DIY kettles. I see it on, you know, mash tons, fermenters, all kinds of stuff like that. Now, this particular one here has a lock on it so that, you know, you don't accidentally come by and, and knock it open. Um, but it's, like I said, it's, it's very simple. It has a ball that rotates inside, a half-inch NPT on both sides, so you can either screw it onto a a bulkhead or something like that and then put your uh, mail fitting on the other side. Now stepping up a little bit of a notch is the three-piece ball valve. Now it's three pieces, it's called a three-piece ball valve because there's three pieces to the valve. So you've got the you know the, the front NPT, rear NPT, and then the valve body itself. Now we're going to take all these apart here in just a minute and show you how they operate and everything. But uh, it this one, this particular one does not have a locking mechanism either. Some of them do. Now the next one is kind of almost the holy grail of uh, valves. You know, a lot of people like these things and, you know, ooh and ah over them. Um, they're really heavy, but this is uh, what's called a butterfly valve. Now, this particular one has kind of a locking mechanism as well. You have to pull out on the handle in order to open it or close it. And you can lock it in different positions. What makes it so nice is that inside there is a silicone o-ring that is sandwiched between these two plate steel pieces. Actually, they're not plate steel, they're more like a machine steel. And then there's a butterfly or like a, a flap valve that actually, when you close it, it actually seals up against that silicone. So this is a very sanitary valve because there's not really any places, cracks, crevices, or anything like that for stuff to hide, which is which is very good for brewing. Um, and you know, it, it's probably one of the premier valves and it's used on professional breweries, you know, throughout the world. The next one is kind of a, it's a little bit more obscure. You don't see it a lot, but this is a three piece ball valve. And basically what it allows you to do, it allows you to direct, to direct, you know, your flow of liquid in multiple different directions. So you can have this positioned in, in different ways. So like in this one, this particular position, I can flow from here through here. If I go this way, then I'm flowing here through here. If I go this way, then it's flowing through all three flip it all the way around the other way, then we're only flowing through this way. So there's a lot of different applications where you might use this. Maybe if you're doing recirculation on a mash tun or, you know, doing this, running liquid through there and you want to have this so that you can just flip a valve and instead of doing your recirculation for your mash, you start running your sparge water over top of there. But these are pretty handy as far as that goes. I mean, you can have where it recirculates through a, a whirlpool port and then also recirculates through your chiller. So there's a lot of different ways that that works. Um, they're very handy in some situations. You don't see them a lot in home brewing, but they are they are an option out there. Uh, the next one is the Blickman linear flow valve. And it's pretty much, it's, it's a lot different than the other valves. Uh, basically what it has, it has a, a uh, pointed, like a cone shaped surface. And that actually goes into an orifice down here. And there's, there's a double seal. So the, the flow, the valve actually will seal up against the surface in there as well as seal this opening here so that when you have it wide open, you don't actually have liquid coming out of this port here. So that, you know, it, it has the least amount of moving parts probably out of any of these valves. Um, it does, on this particular one here that's the threaded style, it does have threads that go into 
the that come through the kettle wall and uh, we're going to talk about all this wart that's on here in just a minute <laughs> but uh so there are some threads on this which could possibly you know become contaminated and it looks like i needed to have cleaned this a long time ago which is kind of why we're talking about this um, it has an npt fitting on this side so you can attach whatever style of uh, fitting you want now blickman recently released a tri-clamp version of it which is this one is kind of um, this is kind of the best of both worlds, like a, you know, the, the cross between a butterfly valve and a ball valve, kind of. Um, it's not a ball valve, but it basically has the same type of technology or the same type of workings as the other one does. This one here actually has a, a clip to help hold it on, which, I mean, you can rotate it past the clip if you try hard enough. But in order to get it to come all the way out, you got to take that clip off and then it'll come out. But same type of technology there. The only two sealing surfaces that you have are these two high temperature silicone o-rings and they do work very well and uh, the, one of the things that I've kind of liked about this one is that it has a, it's a right angle these are right angle as well but you know the nice thing about this with the right angle you can kind of twist it and turn it and uh, position it in whatever direction that you want I find on my brewing bench that you know a lot of times I'm going one left or right so or down to the pumps okay so as far as what the valves are good for this is a very decent cheap option I mean it's a, it's a really low cost valve um, it'll work on fermenters as well as brewing systems and everything like that. I don't see anything wrong with it. Doesn't have the highest amount of flow, but as long as you keep it clean and everything, I mean, it'll provide you with many, many years of good service. Same way with this one. Um, it's you're going to get a better flow out of it because of the size opening and the the ball inside. But again, you know, it's it's a pretty simple valve. They're pretty cheap. They're not. I think they're under ten dollars if I remember correctly. And uh, you know, you get plenty of of good use out of it as long as you keep it nice and clean. Um, Stepping up to the next one, I think probably the ease of cleaning on this one is probably the, the most favorable on this. It's easy to keep, easier to keep this one completely clean. Uh, this ball valve here, you got to go in there and kind of, you know, take all the pieces apart and out and everything. When you take this one apart, everything pretty much just comes apart and you can clean it a lot easier. But same thing with it. It's pretty high flow. No issue with having this on a on a fermenter or brewing system or anything like that. As with all these, they have threads that can get kind of nasty sometimes. So... There is that. Um, as far as the butterfly valve goes, it's a great option for brewing systems. But the one thing you need to know about these is they're not good at controlling flow. Because And you can kind of see the reason why, I mean, you, you know, you get it to a trickle and it's pretty decent. But then as soon as you start to open it up a little bit more, it, it's, it's not a linear flow where it's like, you know, where you get a, a constant gradual amount of flow curve, if you will. It's pretty much like a closed or open. So... This is not the best for recirculation into like a over a mash or something like that. This is fine for dump valves on fermenters or, you know, a valve that you open wide open or close on a kettle or something like that. Um, the linear flow valve from Blickman is probably one of the best as far as flow control goes. And that's one of the reasons why I've actually left it on my kettles that I got from Blickman. And this is not a Blickman commercial by any means. It's just they do work really well on their riptide pump and also on their kettles. So, you know, it, it is pretty infinitely adjustable as far as that goes, which makes it very attractive as well as being, you know, it's super easy to clean because you got like two moving parts with a couple of washers on there. So, you know, that is kind of what the, the usage is for. Uh, these are used also, are fine to use on fermenters and brewing systems and all that kind of thing. So that's pretty much what the usage case is on this. Now let's take a look at the cleaning. Let's move all these out of the way here and I'll kind of talk to you about cleaning on these. Now I have pre-loosened a lot of these things so that I can do them by hand, but you should, actually this one here's, I loosened it, but it's not quite as loose as I thought it was. So you should be able to take all these apart. Now the first thing you're gonna do on one of these type of valves is you're gonna take the handle off. And you know, I would say, make sure you do it over a surface, kind of like what I'm doing here, so you don't lose anything on it. And then this comes off. And the O-rings come out. And then this actually, unscrews the body unscrews and then you want to be kind of careful when you unscrew this thing because yeah look see there's liquid in there so there's a there's a teflon surface here that the ball rotates on there's also a silicone seal here and then there's the ball that comes out of the inside and then you've also got another surface in there but as you saw even though this thing has been dry for a while when i took it all apart there was water that was in there oh there gotta be careful with that teflon ring there um, so it's definitely a good idea to make sure you're cleaning these things. Make sure that, you know, when you, when you do the cleaning on them, that you take all of the, uh, all of the surfaces and, and brush them up really good, clean them up really good. 
because a lot of uh, bad stuff can hide in there. Imagine if you didn't get all the wart out or something like that and you had some wart sitting in there and uh, it just it just sat there and got rancid. So definitely a good idea to clean these as much, you know, as often as you possibly can. Um, I would say at least every couple brew days, something like that. And then uh, they go back together pretty easily. Just uh, screw on there like that. Anyways, set that over there. All right, the next one is the uh, the two-piece ball valve. It's kind of the same way. You got to take the you can take this off. Actually, I don't even know if you really need to take it off. Quite honestly, um, you can. But the uh, this piece comes out, and then the ball will come out on this as well. I'll take it. See if I can get it out of there. There it goes. So yeah, this is a prime example of why you should be cleaning them. And take a look inside of there if you can see that on the camera there. This has a bunch of like brown residue in there. Um, and it looks like, you know, I might have cleaned this pretty good at one point. And this came off of one of my systems. But you can kind of see there's a bunch of dried crap in there. So this is definitely a cautionary tale on taking these valves apart and cleaning them as often as you can. And, you know, you definitely want to... Even the uh, the handle here, when you take the handle off and take the handle out, get the handle off here. There's also another nut on here that you can take this out with. Get this off of here. And this is going to show you some of the the nastiness that's inside of there as well. It's uh, not pretty, <laughs> for sure. Let me pull this out of there if I can get it out. It comes out the bottom. So yeah, you can see there's a lot of a lot of crust and crud all over that mechanism there. So it's definitely a good idea to take these things apart and clean them every so often. I mean, there's a lot of gunk in there. I'm kind of embarrassed, quite frankly. But that's you know that's why I'm doing this video so you guys understand. You got to take these valves apart every so often, at least at least two to three times a year to clean them out. Now this one's a little bit more complicated in the fact that it's got. Uh, four nuts that hold it together and it's a little bit more complicated of course but uh, not too bad basically the same type of thing as the other ones you're gonna take this take the uh, bolts out and these are actually a little bit easier to clean than the than the standard ball valves are because they just come apart so easily um, as far as they come apart more completely, let's say they don't come apart necessarily easily because there's like four bolts that hold them together, but you can gain access to every single ceiling surface. I mean, as you can see, all of the uh, components come out, and then if I take this screw out, then you'll be able to access all that. And you can kind of see here, too, that there's a little bit of, little bit of gunk and crud, and I'm actually kind of smelling a little bit of, uh, of uh, some kind of some wart there or something. So this has been on my, uh, on my uh, hot liquor tank, so... I mean, these are due for a cleaning, and I generally do them fairly often, but, you know, I haven't done them in a little while. So, yeah, I mean, it's you can see there's, like, some nastiness in there. So, definitely due for a cleanup on this. All right, so let me move this off to the side here. I'm not going to take the butterfly valve apart. It's just kind of a pain to take it apart. Um, and I'm not going to take the three-piece ball valve apart. It's kind of like the same type of thing. Now, on the Blickman valve, really the only thing you have to do to clean it is just remove this, uh, especially on the... The uh, tri-clamp version, I mean, you could remove this, and then if you want to, you can take the O-rings off, clean that out. Now, the one thing that I noticed, this was on my Whirlpool port on my uh, my three-vessel system. For so Somehow, I must have lost the O-ring, because you can kind of see around the edge here, there is some wart that's on the edge there, and then also some here. So this is definitely, <laughs> i got to get me another O-ring for this. It was sealed up somehow, I don't know, I didn't see any uh, any leakage or anything, but it's a good thing that I pulled this off to do this video, because I need to clean this thing. But uh, this has uh, a kind of a different type of fitting that's weldless on the inside. There should be a washer uh, O-ring there, so you can, you know, it'll seal up against the outside of the kettle. And then this is the whirlpool that goes in there. Now, there's some O-rings inside of here, and those things actually seal up against this whirlpool arm. So it kind of goes in the kettle like this. But, uh, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why you definitely want to make sure you're cleaning your valves. And like I said, I suggest doing this at least two or three times a year. 
or if you brew a lot, maybe every three or four brew days, something like that. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like down below. You know, I certainly do appreciate it. I'm, I'm doing some more different type of videos than I've done before. But uh, this has been Brian for Short Circuit of Brewers. We'll see you in the next video.